Hey, what's up everybody? Really excited to tell you about the finished product of this bathroom that I've titled Grandpa Bath. We have a video series, a playlist. I'm gonna put that card up right now so you can see it. Uh, this is episode nine or 10, but it's a start to finish remodel, which I don't normally do. I normally do little instructional bits and pieces of projects, but I really wanted to compile a full bathroom from start to finish, from the demo, everything we encountered, the water damage to replacing a dry rot, all of the rough plumbing, rough electrical issues that we ran into, and just all the, the whole thing. And so now we end up with, with a beautiful finish and I'm really, really happy with how this turned out. It took a lot of planning that it just took a lot, of, a lot of planning. It doesn't just come together by just throwing up tiles. Every step has to be considered when you're, especially when you're working in a small bathroom. We have clearances we need to meet. We have full tile layouts that we need to check out. Uh, one of the things I want to show you is the vanity area here and the center lines that we had to meet. So I always like to have my vanity, the vanity cabinet, and the sink obviously is goes off of this center line. Well, that means a couple different things. That means that not only the sink has to be in line, all the plumbing, but the mirror has to be centered off of this. Our tile layout is centered right on that. And then our light fixture is centered. So this is one of those things where you could get into it and just start slapping in rough plumbing and not even know how it's going to end up. So our, our electrical box had to be moved over. Our plumbing center lines had to be just right. Our cabinet center line had to be just right. And of course the countertop, when I fabricated this countertop, I had to make sure the sinkhole was in the right place. So those are just some of the considerations. Uh, the shower turned out, I mean, it's just to check it out. You've seen uh, the video that I had on installing this glass mosaic and it came out once it's grouted, came out super nice. It has like this, these little fissures in the glass that the grout just kind of catches in and it gives it kind of just like a, just a rustic kind of old fashioned handcrafted look. This is all recycled glass from Sonoma Tile Makers. It's a great line. Uh, I want to show you the curbless entry. So uh, we went with curbless and I had a few questions on how, why we chose to put the drain here and not here because you could, if the drain was back here, we could have the fall go all from zero to here. Uh, in this instance, uh, I wanted to have the drain on this side so that the slope was, as you stand at the shower, you're standing on an even slope going this way as opposed to standing on a slope going this way. So it could be done either way. Uh, and I do them both ways. As a matter of fact, my house, I have it going this way and it doesn't bother me. But uh, just the way this laid out, I wanted to have the drain here. Uh, this is a chrome drain by Schluter. It's one of their Curdy line drains. It's a beautiful drain in the chrome finish. We have our wall tile sits down right on to the actual grade itself but we needed to make sure, again, real tight tolerances. This is like 3 16 here, 3 16 here. And you gotta make sure you're able to remove the grate to get the hair catcher out. This is my favorite drain style. A lot of different kinds. There's the tileable grates, but I just think seeing the drain, using it as a design feature is really nice having it pop with all of the other chrome fixtures just adds a lot. I, I really wanted to see this train. I really wanted it to be part of the design feature of the whole shower. Here you can see we did a, this is Schluter a Jolly trim. Uh, we call this an A100. We use this to trim the shower and you can kind of see how we made this work. Um, it goes from zero over there goes from zero at the door entrance and then it falls all the way down to over an inch at the drain. So we got good slope coming down. 
our glass panel. We're going to try to bump as close to this as we can. And uh, here's here's our chrome chrome fixtures. Uh, we went with Delta. Uh, we got a two function shower, so got a regular shower head, and then we have a hand shower and a bar that's on a diverter. So what I like about these, not only can you take them off and clean the shower, it's, it's real nice to be able to reach like, reach into the corners and spray everything down. But I, I always like when there's a lady in the house, a lot of times they don't like to wash their hair. So I tell them, you know, you could just put the slide bar down and if you don't want to get your hair wet, you can take a shower here. Uh, and then of course you have the regular shower head, you just flip it to the regular shower head when you just want to get, wash your hair and shampoo and everything. So I got a lot of questions on how we trim out the end when we float a wall, because as we add our mortar bed, we add thickness off the drywall. And a lot of people want to know how we do this. Well, all I, all we do is take a piece of the same, same bullnose trim and we rip it down however thick we need to. So you can see Devin, if you come in around here, you can see all this is, is just a piece of bullnose that's ripped and we put it on its side. So it gives a really nice finish on the edge. And I actually like to have uh, a little bit of build out. It kind of gives the whole shower, I don't know, maybe a, a little bit beefier look, a little more um, substance to it. You can see it has this thickness, which is really nice. Uh, we went with the chair rail for the Wayne's coating. This is a matching uh, ceramic, same line uh, for the chair rail. And this is also a really nice piece that we did down here, which is uh, kind of like a baseboard piece. They call this uh, the Millennium. But we got a trim piece down here. We cut in here. Um, of course, our tile. Of course, we made sure our tile lined up here. Uh, our trim is offset to give it a staggered look. And oftentimes, as it was in this case, the trim tiles aren't exactly the same tiles as the field tiles. So if they're off a little bit, it'll look funky if you try to line them up. So you want to stagger your trim if that's the case. And I, I like to have my trim offset. I think it just gives it a little, uh, it just breaks it up a little bit, gives uh, whatever you're trimming out a little more substance. So really nice layout here. Again, chair rail picks up on this side. We trimmed our wall cap the same way here. We took that all the way down. We got our quartz countertop and I'll put up that card so you can see me fabricating this countertop. Uh, but I had a what we call a remnant, a leftover piece from another job, but you can see it's, it's just a really nice piece that fit really well with this bathroom. Uh, we got our waypoint cabinetry and I really like this cabinetry. It's got, it's got uh, dovetail drawers, soft close guides. Uh, we use the chrome hardware to trim it out. Uh, Three-way adjustable drawers, soft close hinges. And actually, so these are factory line cabinets, uh, but they're made in Arizona. And the nice thing about that is California has really strict VOC laws. So they don't allow us to use the same conversion varnishes that they use in other states like Nevada, Arizona. But these come from Arizona, already painted, already finished. And I just really like them. Uh, the insides under the sink, uh, we put escutcheons on everything. So even all the stuff that you see under the cabinet, uh, it, it looks really clean inside. So to me, this stuff, this stuff really matters you'll see, but I really like having the wainscot run all the way around and act as the backsplash too. It just gives it a really nice uniform look. Um, handmade ceramic tiles, it just, it just really does it for me. In California, you know, it kind of goes with a Victorian feel a little bit, just a really, really cool design, but, um, homeowner did some of the artwork I didn't choose uh, I didn't choose the mirror the light fixture looks like she made a trip to home goods or something and got some of these accessories that actually work really well so there you have it that's the bathroom and um, 
I just really wanted to be able to show you what, what it looks like finished. So many of our so many of our projects we just show little bits and pieces and having it all come together is really special. And again, that's why I do this stuff is this is the payoff. Seeing this all come together, it's it's such a rewarding feeling. It's something that I know that me and my company is gonna leave in this home for decades. And every time they come in to use it, you know, it's gonna be mean something special, especially all of the hard work that went into this. This was, you know, gosh, it was probably four weeks off and on of, of, of different work. And so I'm really proud of it. I really wanted to share it with you guys and just encourage you guys that if you're not fulfilled in the job that you do and you're looking to get into something like this, leave your comments in the section below, start networking with people in the industry, and this might be a path that you wanna get on. And it's just, just something that I feel that I'm trying to share with the world, something that gave me a lot of purpose, fulfillment, joy. It's given me a great lifestyle. It's provided my family everything we need and I'm forever grateful for it. So the least I can do is give back. So thank you guys for watching. I love you guys. I love being your tile coach. We'll see you on the next video.